Good morning everyone. It's another day off um, and we're on the road. <laughs> He's Carol's itching. It's itching to start. Start what? Just start messing about like this. Good morning everyone. Good morning we're... everyone, I'm a vlogger. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. What? Hi, my name's Stephen and I'm a vlogger. <laughs> uh, anyway, so <laughs> Uh, we are on the road again. We've got a couple of errands to do um, this morning um, before and after breakfast and then we're going to um, Radio Alty. Um, so we're on our way to um, a little place called Chris Walker, uh, which is a plant nursery in Timperley. Uh, what are you after anyway, guys? Eucalyptus. 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 And why do we need eucalyptus? Just to make the yard look a bit less of a dump site, quite frankly. So we're going to get some plants for the yard at the shop. And I did want mimosa, but they don't have it. And we, I thought we just bought plants, haven't we, a few weeks ago? Every single <laughs> last effing one of them have died in the frost. So they, they must have been planted up all of two days before the frost got hold of them and killed every one of them. Then we are off to, uh, I think we're going to have breakfast near uh, Davis Dairy. So Davis Dairy is a farm um, near Mobley. Um, I don't know if it's classed as Mobley or Ashley um, or whether they're both Ashley. the same. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go and do a little bit of a, uh, a recon um, visit to Davis Dairy. Um, we've never spoke to them, um, but we've got a thought in our head. Um, so we'd quite like to, when we do expand in the future, into the bricks and mortar shop, uh, which you'll have seen on the previous video. Uh, if I remember, because I'm likely not to, but I'll put the link up here. You can have a look in that other um, that other video uh, to see inside the shop. Um, but yeah, so we want to go to Davis Dairy. Um, they're probably the um, the closest um, dairy farm to the hive, um, and we want to um, get a couple of liters of milk from there um, and experiment with that milk this week to see what the um, how foamable it is and what it's like in our coffees. Um, and all being well, um, and again, we've not spoken to them, they might not even do this, but all being well, we'd like to uh, speak to them about the possibility of sourcing milk from them um, on a refill basis. So if we have a massive container or something and then a machine that we can then um, sell milk from, and then we can obviously use that milk for our coffees and everything as well, um, completely eliminating uh, plastic milk bottles. Um, so fingers crossed that works out and we're going to go to uh, Barnshaw Smithy, is it? Yeah. Uh, for breakfast, uh, have a look at the Google pictures, it looks good. Hey look, a new subscriber. Oh, you're really good. You're really good. What a beautiful warm welcome. What a beautiful welcome. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Go on then, show me the way.
Sophie. Hey, baby. Come on then, sit. Do you trick. Trick. Good girl. There you go. Good girl. Hi everyone, so we've just finished breakfast and Steve's forced me to do this little bit of a video to say how good it was. <laughs> it Are you saying it wasn't good? It was very, very nice. So by and Shaw Smithy, we were very impressed. Sausages, everything else was amazing. Really, really tasty and could actually eat it a second time. Um, so yeah, definitely worth a visit. And by a serendipitous moment, we saw outside that we're getting some sapling eggs delivered, fresh sapling eggs. So we have got in touch with the farm in the hope that we can start stocking those eggs at our future project going on at the hive. But for now, we're just going uh, to the dairy to inquire about getting some produce from here as well. I'm quite excited because as well as um, moos. as well as milk, they actually do milkshakes.
Yeah, definitely. Do I get another milk as well? For the hive, so we can try these in copies. We can ask some of our regulars what they think. What is that for home? Uh, that was for the hive? Yeah, but maybe get two. Maybe, yeah. Uh, Where are you going? Oh, what actual place? Yeah. Oh, Coffee 22. Why are we going Coffee 22? Because uh, it's a local small business and uh, he makes his own cakes and we've never actually been before and I've always wanted to go. It looks like a lovely little cafe. Fair enough. So, is this Ashley Road then? Uh, yeah. So Ashley Road, just up from the Oxford Road turning, and here we go. You need more coffee, ready for the radio interview, don't we? Oh, Get you fully yeah. caffeinated. It's not enough. Oh. <laughs> You'll be fine when you're there. Well, no one can see my facial expressions. It's on radio, so. It's all being I can filmed. Be as as one. You can't, it's all going to be filmed. Watch me. It's going to be filmed, and they're going to see it on here. That's not even your grumpy face. <laughs> I know, yeah. This is just my face. I've just got a naturally grumpy face. Resting bitch face. Yeah, sorry, I'm just gonna uh, have Good afternoon to you too. Now then, uh, I've got two guests in the studio today, and uh, could you just introduce yourselves? 
Uh, I'm Stephen from The Hive. And I'm Gareth, also from The Hive. And you look like twins, is that what everybody tells you? Everyone says that, but... Uh, I'm the been, handsome one. And as we've been <laughs> telling everyone in Morocco, kif kif, which kif. means we just look alike. Oh, OK, I believe you say kif kif. <laughs> I don't understand it, what it says. But, but you came in the studio a couple of months ago, didn't you? Yeah, nobody would know about that, though, would they? Ken? No, <laughs> somebody didn't press the right button, somebody didn't. Yeah. But there we go. Thankfully, we're joined by a fourth person today, aren't we? We are, and uh, <laughs> I've got my... Great assistant, Will. Good afternoon, Will. Good afternoon. And what have you been up to? Uh, I've been telling you to press the right button. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Will. My chief, my chief negotiator here and uh, uh, definitely the, uh, the right guy to be sat next to. Anyway, we'll start off with a, a record. I don't know which one we got, Will. What uh, have we got today? All of These Nights by uh, Tom Grennan. There we go, Tom Grennan. I can't hear anything in the ears. So... Where am I going with this? Uh, so you are currently plugged into number two by the looks of it. Should you be plugged into number one? I don't know. Ah, oh, nice one, yeah. Not spotted. I know. I'm going, I'm going deaf. You are? <laughs> That's my favourite joke. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a go. I'm just listening live just in case, but you are right. I'm listening live just in case, but it sounds like we're all right. All right. Radio. And thank you, A-Plan Insurance. Meanwhile, back in the studio, we have Gareth and Stephen from The Hive. Now, where is The Hive? Uh, so The Hive is uh, at 32A Grosvenor Road, which is the road that links between Altrincham Interchange and Navigation Road. The one that runs down by the side of the railway track. That's the one, yeah. Yes. Opposite um, what used to be, totally can't remember, the Plumbers Merchants. Travis um, Perkins. Travis Perkins used to be opposite us. Travis Perkins um, was uh, small then in those days, if it was. <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. Well, it was uh, quite a big unit, what's facing us, but it's now uh, A4 Studios. So we're opposite A4 yeah, Studios, which yeah. is just filled with dozens and dozens of, like, independent creative folk oh that's what's in there is it yeah. because when the tram pulls up between navigation road and uh, altrigham you sat by, sat by this wall i can see the hive as i'm pulling up yes and this is a brick building next to it isn't it across yeah. the road yeah, yeah. so the uh, the building closer to the metro link is um a4 studios and as you say the hive is just over the road yeah. it's probably the only thing that you can see at the moment that actually looks alive we've got like beautiful lights a nice seating area outside but yeah it still looks a little bit um, abandoned and neglected at the moment it's because the, of other buildings. It's the shutters next door, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, yes. we'll come to that in a minute because I want to just get a bit of background because we did this before. It's like deja vu for you two, isn't it? <laughs> but my <laughs> memory is like, what did I have on my dinner last night? I don't know. But so what, what I'm going to say is, uh, I got you, Gareth, born in Withenshaw. That's the one, yeah. Born yeah. and raised in Withenshaw. You can probably tell by the very Mancunian accent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I was born and raised in Withenshaw as well. Sorry? I was born and raised, actually. Oh, no, I heard. I'm just <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. <laughs> Bit of brunch. That's yeah, one of his favourites. Yeah, show's going to be that, that is it, yeah, okay. So, uh, uh, went to Parkland School? Yeah, went to Parkland School, yeah. And uh, came out with ologies and... Do you know, I have no idea. A few GCSEs. That's the one, was and, it? And, yeah, quick wit. <laughs> quick wit, as, as I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just receiving it. Yes, I, I'm getting that now. But then you went on, and this is, this is what got me last time, you got straight into Armani and Gucci. Yeah. Um, As in, like, did Mr. Armani say hello? Can you come over? Unfortunately, with no, no, I've never met him, no. Right. Uh, but I did work for Armani Exchange in the Trafford Centre when it first opened there many, many years ago. It's now closed down. Okay. Um, I was that bad a worker, it closed down. <laughs> I, picked, I picked up a word there, exchange, Armani Exchange. Armani Exchange, yeah. It so was like another kind of, uh, no, it was almost like a... Um, high street version of Armani so you, they have different sections in the in the Armani branch and we were like the more affordable easily accessible Armani so that's what it started out with more like a streetwear brand I picked up the word affordable that's yeah, the, yeah that's, that's <laughs> the one that got me when yeah. I say affordable the jeans were still a hundred pound but for Armani that was affordable can I just stop you there this is this is cheap for us because we were dealing with uh, what, trainers for 1200 pounds yeah, last week oh really from, yeah guy Joe from kit collective well done Joe uh, thanks for coming in £1,200 for a pair of trainers. I'd be scared to death to wear them, but yeah. presumably they're just going to be there for highly collectible purposes. Well, he says that lots of people are after these sort of things mm. anyway, and they go up from 250 upwards. And when we're both looking at each other like, oh, mine was £65, <laughs> but I don't... <laughs> so but that explains why when you look in trainer shops now, they're all sort of like uh, vacuum packs, like the, yeah. the shoes are individually vacuum packs. Yeah. No wonder at that price. But, but have you seen all the glitter and the gold all around them as well? They're all colourful, no. aren't they? Yeah. Uh, we went into Panda, was it? Will, 
Uh, Help me. I think you you mean the shoe. The shoe was yeah, panda. Yeah, it was like a, it's, it's, a white, it's a black and white shoe. Is what oh, it's right. called panda. Yeah. Right. It's the panda something. I've yeah. just got a feeling everybody's having a go today. Would we ever? Would we ever? Will you sacked? <laughs> no, don't go. Will. Good luck, Ken. Don't go, Will. <laughs> so yeah, so we're in Amani. How long do you last there? Um, we what have we? Uh, I was there for ooh, I think five years, and then did a couple of jobs in between, such as Tesco co-op. And then um, my old manager in Armani. I'll say it. It was headhunted. Oh, I was headhunted. Nice. Oh yes, I'm Modest that talented. Guy. People want me. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a surprise to me as well. Yeah. But my old manager from Armani spotted me in Terminal Three in the airport working in accessories, yeah. and she, um, many moons later, worked for Gucci in the traffic centre. And yeah, she had hunted me to work there, and I worked there for almost ten years. Can, left recently. Can I just say you're a name dropper? <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> I'm on this week, Gucci next. I know, oh, yeah. I know, yeah. sweetie darling. And now the heart. <laughs> it's good on your CV, isn't it? Though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's Gucci as opposed to Armani? What's the difference? I mean, uh, they're all high class wear. They're all high class wear, but yeah, just to bore you a little bit, Gucci is seen as one of the most premium brands in the world. So you'll have top kind of six premium brands. I won't name them, but Gucci's well up there with the top brands out there. And then there's. Um, Almost like sub designers, high street designers. It's a whole mix and hierarchy of designer wear. I can hear our female listeners going, Yeah, don't you know all this, Ken? It's uh, Gucci, yeah. Gucci, you know. <laughs> you didn't even know Gucci. what a panda shoe was, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I learned last week, I tell you. So, that was it. so there we go. So uh, you're born and raised in uh, Withenshaw. You grew up, you eventually grew up. <laughs> eventually, kind of. Still trying. And now you're in the hive. That's the one, yeah. Uh, so okay. now self employed with Stephen in the hive, yeah. Well, doesn't that motivate you to be self employed? You've got to keep going, haven't you? You've got well, to keep yeah. yeah. It's definitely easier being employed, isn't it? It's yeah, somebody else has a responsibility. It, it's yeah, it's definitely easier taking home like a guaranteed wage and having sick uh, sick days and holidays and stuff like that. However, you're not your own boss. It's not as fun. It is fun most of the time. And I think really now we're at the hive. It's pretty much a social kind of like thing. We're going to come to that because you've got uh, growth. So we'll come yes. to that in a little while. Is that yes. all right? Yes, but meanwhile, yeah. back at you. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and again, you came from the Brooklyn side of Winshaw. Uh, yeah. So, so um, did yeah. Did you know each other at all? No. no, um, no apparently, no. though, Gareth does recall going past the road that we now live in or live on um, and looking down there thinking, oh, I'd love to live like down this little cul de sac. Um, and that little cul de sac is where I actually was living at ah. the time. Yeah. And so we'd be driving past on the bus or whatever and yeah um, had aspirations then this is why i think yeah you've got to manifest things because if you think enough hard enough things will happen and they will sure. come to fruition so sure. manifest everything is it called fate yes exactly <laughs> that yes <laughs> i believe in fate actually yeah and you make your own look as well as you I, that, yeah, I believe, completely yeah. agree okay so you've been educated with sure etc but then you you went into something completely different you didn't go into retail did you uh, no, so um, educated is a word I'd use loosely. I wasn't very good <laughs> in school. Um, however, I had enough GCSEs, which got me eventually into the uh, public sector. Um, so, um, again, some retail work with Tesco. Um, did a few stints at the airport, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, but, yeah, end, uh, ended up with the uh, the police service originally. That's completely different, isn't it? Yes. So what, what happened? Did you say a fancy nicking a few robbers and that sort of thing? <laughs> um, I'm not too sure how like how it ended up, but yeah, I ended up in the police control room initially, yeah. um, which is a civilian role, dispatching and um, sort of like allocating resources and prioritising what jobs the police go to, which I would not want to be doing now. Right. Um, and then I also joined the special constabulary in um, Cheshire. I wasn't brave enough to join GMP. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to Salford as a police officer. There's no way on earth. Uh, so yeah, I ended up in Cheshire around Wilmslow, Knutsford, um, Oldley Edge. And you'd be surprised at how much trouble there actually is in those areas. The posher thief. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure uh, that you'd go that far, but let's just say I bumped into a lot of women's shore folk anyway. <laughs> oh, I see, of course, this is where the mo yeah, they gravitate where the money is, don't they? Yes. It's yes. like, unfortunately, we have people come to hail and nabby watches, and uh, if anybody's listening, don't be put off, but make sure you don't wear out your best watching in, in the shopping centres because they know who you are. Don't wear your panda shoes. That's the ones, yeah. <laughs> and they, they were called, or they are called, hogger muggers. 
you right. come up to you, pretend to be your friend, put your arms around you. They've got your wallet, they've got your watch. Oh, I'm always up for a hug as well, so I'd be a <laughs> <sucker>. <laughs> yeah. So, but I say, yeah. See, we had the uh, police from next door there. That, if you hear a siren, by the way, the police are next door to us at the studio. But really great guy. They gave us confidence, you know, lock your doors, lock your windows, that sort of thing. Yeah. But, uh, in fact, I'll bring them in again because things change. Yeah, very deep. I'm going. What's that on your arm? Granddad. Oh yeah, it's, it started off just as like text, um, and then it grew, it grew into... Boy, granddad, not your granddad. No, I'm not a granddad. No, I've got Boy, a granddad. I can't stand kids. So I've not got patience for children or grandchildren. You can't, you can't hit a whole one, right? Okay. Please help yourself to a Prosecco. Thank you. Happy second birthday. Do you feel good? Well, somebody have to do it. So you, 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 it's called self-promotion, I think. Mean. Mm. Yeah. Me shameless with your own time. Yeah. I'm not even lying, I did what do you call it? I did look at um the um the email that went out. I don't, don't know if it was Rod or someone else that sent it out basically saying that they're always looking for We are and I'm, I'm and being I'm and sorry, that was being serious by the way. We do have a Thursday afternoon slot coming up. Oh right. <laughs> Putting the pressure on him now, aren't you? Pressure on. 38 seconds, by the way, I'm not here in two weeks. You're on your own now, mate. 20, sir. I'm not here next week. Oh, and I'm leaving early. I'll be going in 34 seconds. P45 coming up. 10. Yeah, keep going. 8. 2 more sponsors in fact so we've got uh, Helpful Home Limited in sale and their slogan is weekends are for fun not for cleaning and I agree with that don't you? Absolutely. Yeah let's, let's get out and get somebody else to clean your house. <laughs> in there. So if you want to uh, get in contact it's Helpful Homes Limited and they're based in sale and if you need your home cleaning contact them straight away. Now then the other one is a oh, apart from a plan insurance is Kennedy Space Centre and our good friend there Bruce Melnick who I interviewed and as I say, he's now on uh, Radio Alti, Mick Cloud, and if you just look under Ken Garrity and Friends and last week's date. Now then, meanwhile, back at the Hive. Okay, it's a hive of industry, isn't it? Yeah, okay. it certainly is, yes. So you've got the shot, we've heard. Yes. Uh, you've got your black and white photos out, we've heard. <laughs> so how, what did you do? It's like going around to your nana's in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at this, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in black and white. And I'll, I'll put my teeth in. Hey, look, a new subscriber. So you moved in. What are we going to sell, he says? Is it the same thing as on the market, or did you have a change of plan? Uh, we had a change of plan. So we originally did antiques uh, at the market, and same with the hive. But as time went on, we introduced more and more products. And we wanted to introduce products that we ourselves would use. So currently now we offer a refillery with natural cleaning products. Can you mean that? Refillery? Refillery. New word for me? Oh, oh is it? Oh, refillery. Can you very behind the times? So. Oh, tell me about <laughs> it. <laughs> so uh, the youth of today are refilling everything to avoid plastic waste. And yeah, refilleries are popping up everywhere. Single use plastic is out. Exactly. Gareth yes. says he's behind the times, but Ken was probably ahead of the times. I bet. Before like, plastic came about. <laughs> I bet when Ken was Will's age, <laughs> I bet there right. was no, there was no kind of like disposable plastic. So I bet you were well, doing it. Well, they were dinosaurs, weren't they? Listen, I used to return my bo pot bottles for six p a go. So, so that's you, you're, oh. you're laughing so, at me, but it's yeah. true. So, so I'm greener than you two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like <laughs> even now, like the um, the glass bottles that we sell from the beverage bar, if someone buys a glass bottle of whether it be cola, lemonade, apple juice, orange juice, if they leave it behind, we will reuse it for um, the refill section. All right. So we'll sterilise the bottle, we'll take the label off it, we'll fill it with 
washing up liquid or something else and someone can then basically just pay for the liquid that's in it without paying for the bottle, bottle. Yeah. and that doubles the use of that bottle at least then that's brilliant that actually going it's on the left hand side isn't it actually going down yeah uh, in the, yeah in and the we've shop. recently just um added some more to it as well so we had um cleaning products as Dee said such as um, washing up liquid and we do uh, laundry detergent etc and this last week we've just added some natural skincare as well so a cleanser ah. toner moisturizer and you can bring any container you wish and just fill up with your cleanse toner and moisturizer as much or as little as you want so we're adding to it pretty much on a monthly basis and How it's never charge? too late to start moisturizing <laughs> <laughs> you know you shocking, know shocking. Yeah. <laughs> Station's going off the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, not going to get invited back here. No. Are we? Oh, you are. You can take over the show. I can have a day on. But seriously, uh, how do you charge for that? So by weight. So we've got ah. some uh, scales in the yeah. shop. And yeah, you don't pay anything for the packaging. It's just exactly what you pay for in terms of the product of cleanser, toner, and moisturizer. So it's incredible value for money. And you're not paying for all the fancy packaging that comes with it. You're paying purely that's, for the product that works. That's what you're paying the £2 extra for, isn't it? You're paying more than £2 extra for some well. companies. Trust me, yeah. there's a hell of a lot added on for a lot of packaging unnecessarily. Well, I'm going to bring Will in here. You're younger than us three. Okay. Um, so did you ever return bottles to the shop and get your 6p or whatever it was in those days? Well, Go when on. I went to South Africa with my mum, they yeah. uh, had a, the same thing where I went into a shop and I bought, it was Fanta Grape, which was new. Yeah. And it was in a glass bottle. And I was like, this is weird. And then my mum went, oh yeah, you return it. You get you want some money back. You get like 10 and that's Eight. and that's the first time you sit yeah, seen that sort of system. And now it's everywhere. And like at high school, we did it. They used to, you could there was vending machines. You could buy like plastic bottles, and then if you took them to this machine and put them in, they give you like a yeah, I've seen those. Like no, that's clever. Yeah, add money to your account yeah. or something. Yeah, like cool. that, yeah. but also cool. wasn't it Coca Cola cans? Other products are available, <laughs> etc. The cans you return for is it a penny a go? Was that wrong here? I don't think I never saw that. No, I've it's never seen in the it. States. Well, I've yeah. seen it like you can. There's like machines around in places now where you can just take like your brown bin from home and right. they give you like five p a glass or bottle. Right. Well, I actually returned. This is I have a, a plastic bag. It's coincidental. Uh, to put plastic in, which is called loose plastic, I think it's called. Oh, is it soft plastic? Soft plastic, yeah. is it? Yeah, and, and Tesco have it. My mm -hmm. local co-op has it, where I first started. Yeah. First saw it. And you take it back to them. And that's the stuff that you think that you're going to throw in the bin. Yeah. You can recycle the soft stuff, can't you? Absolutely, yeah. I yeah. mean, in an ideal world, it wouldn't come in plastic anyway. It would just come as loose fruit and vegetables. But sure. I can see there's a need for it in terms of, like, meat and stuff. You need to wrap it if... Obviously, in the supermarket section, it needs to be kind of separate from everything if you're not going to a butcher's. But yeah, it's, it's great that they're trying something and, and the soft plastic isn't just going into landfill. It's being reused and repurposed into other things. Yeah, what bugs me is, you know, the, the one, the tray, the meat tray or the meal tray, it doesn't go anywhere in Trafford, does it? But no. other places can. And we had this little um, gripe as well. We, yeah. um, as we set up the tra coffee trailer in the hive, which we've got in our yard, we did research into getting the best packaging possible for the environment. And it turns out that the eco-friendly packaging can't be recycled or composted anywhere in the Trafford Borough or in Greater Manchester. So every single coffee cup in Manchester, regardless of whether it's eco-friendly or not, is going to landfill. So because it's nowhere to compost it. Did so you follow that up? We have, yeah, yeah. we've started <coughs> discussions with Altingham, um Bid. Bid to um, basically put together with some other businesses to have another company come and collect our cups and compost it. But like with everything, it costs a lot. So it's, so it's, it's, it's not efficient for you to do well, that? Unfortunately yeah. not, not on our scale, no. But um, hold on, if we've got whole of 2.5 million people in Greater Manchester doing the recycling, Surely there's an outlet for it. Come on, Trafford. Come on, Man Greater Manchester. Well, we, uh, yeah, get your act together. We attended the meeting and there was the Recycle for Greater Manchester representative there. Um, and just like you're saying with the trays that your meat comes in, yeah. if you look on the bottom of that tray, it'll have a, um, a triangle of recycling That's symbol the on there yeah. and it'll have a number um, at some point in there. Probably number four, something like that, if I remember correctly off the top of my head. If you then have a look at your Coca-Cola bottle or whatever bottle um, may be in your um, bin and have a look at the bottom of that, it'll be the same symbol with the same number. So it's the same plastic. It's been through the system the same amount of times 
However, Recycle for Great Manchester or the councils will say, oh, we only take bottle-shaped plastics. It's not about the shape of the plastic, it's about the type of the plastic. Yeah. And I think what they're trying to make easy and almost like a, um, a fool's guide to recycling is basically causing much more uh, landfill waste than you know, it, should it should be. be. Yeah. You know, it should be down to us to look at the symbols on the, the plastic, look at what the number is, and they say we can put numbers three, four, five, six, whatever in here, um, regardless of the shape of it, rather than discriminating against the shape of the plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Surely, if anybody's listening from Traffic Council, could you please contact Radio Alti and tell us what's going on? Why can't we recycle plastic? Mm. And anybody, obviously, from Greater Manchester councils, there's several of them, uh, let us know what's going on out there, because... People want to recycle. Apparently the other plastics can actually be recycled as well, so a lesser quality plastic which they might not want you to put in the plastic mm -hmm. bin can actually be recycled and Greater Manchester do have the facility to recycle it. However, what they said they don't have is the end buyer for that recycled right, plastic. Right, that's what we need, an end buyer. But if you look on uh, look on social media, look online and search sort of like um, plastic um, building materials, um, there's, a, there's a company in like a third, uh, third world kind of like country that this, this small independent business as such makes products out of Even recycled... house bricks, don't they? Yeah, they make house bricks, they make out, house of bricks out of plastics and it's tougher. That's abroad? Yeah, and it, it's in a country that isn't as well kind of like established as the UK is. Um, so yeah, you think there's definitely more that we should be able to uh, to do over here. Come on, I think we were talking about entrepreneurs. Is there anybody out there that can do the end product of these plastics? Yeah. It's not for me to say, but get get on to Traffic Council or Greater Manchester Councils and uh, see what's going on out there. Mm. We've just gone very political all of a sudden. I know we, we did, didn't we? Yeah. Very deep, very quick. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> let's, 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 let's have a bit of relief. Will, what, what, rescue me. What have we got? Uh, <laughs> she moves in her own way. Does she really? <laughs> right, thank you. We'll have that. That was good. I enjoyed that. So, are you just yeah. linked up <laughs> to your um, Apple Music and stuff? So, do you not have to then worry about um, sort of like what... No, like, that's all right. <laughs> Just no, yeah. It's, fault. it's not in, no, no. the show's not in your name. It's, it's not. not. Well, the king, the <laughs> words were. The lock he gave me then was like, don't say anything. It's going to ask questions. The words were, and I double checked. <coughs> as long as you can buy it and a member of the public, yeah, can play it. Right. But it's something that's like just made for an advert. Yeah, you've got to watch out because they've got copyright. Right. That's what I was told. When I go to prison, and if anyone's going <laughs> to come after a community radio show, then help yourself, please. It's, it's bigger fish. So, right. Marta, Mar you said that she's a specific website. She's been told to get them on. She can download them all in it. Yeah, but she oh, did yeah, download one. Um, there was one that she downloaded. Keep my oh, voice yeah. on you. Was. Um, Have you been on my show? Yeah, and She's it was brilliant. it was Jake Buck, and she, so she played this song, and right at the end of this song, it was a snippet from BBC Radio, <laughs> and it just kept on there, and then the interview carried on, and she's like, oh, that's not meant to be there. It then turned into a telephone interview with Jake Buck <laughs> live Whoa. on radio. All so yeah, yeah, she panicked. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, make sure you listen to it all the way through before playing. <laughs> Please help. Oh. No, no. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Cam. Happy birthday, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> let, let's do a toast. We've not done a cheers. We're not on air. Okay, then. I'm a bit pissed that I've drunk off lemonade. I'm somewhat warm. I love the pouring. Do you know what? I'm a bit like, what? like champagne and all that. Cup of cold, Oh yeah, sure, have a chat. Anybody else want No chat. Have the lot. There's a growing lad, by the way. I, I, I was waiting for him to go through the door just so we could see you like that. Well, just stand under the door for yeah. a minute. When you come nice. back in, don't duck. Oh, wait, I haven't got a photo yet. Make sure I get a photo. Okay. Right. Right. Don't. Yeah, just stand right. there. Fair enough. Well, yeah, you still like. Well, I'm just about feeling you. Yeah. Your door's six foot six. Generally wrapped so, throughout the country, isn't it? So you're six foot five. Yeah, Can I just say, there, if you do ever come down to the hive, please, please remember to wash your hair. Because the amount of people that might get it. It's a it's a brilliant crash album he's brought. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, who have we got? Annie. Let me get Annie quick. Annie. Is she okay? Annie's okay. <laughs> 
And welcome back. And uh, oh, we've all filled up our glasses yet yes, again. Cheers. 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 Happy, happy, chin chin. happy second, second birthday. birthday. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> much appreciated. And you don't look a day over one and three quarters. Yeah, I was waiting for something like that, you two. Uh, and uh, Will, uh, how's Colin going down? It's good, yeah. I've had most of it. <laughs> he is referring to the cake, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Colin the caterpillar is deceased. <laughs> <laughs> Crumbs. No, then. <laughs> I keep going back to. I should, should call it the Hive Show, shouldn't I? I just keep referring to the <laughs> Hive. Right? That's one for our future radio auto expansion into the yeah, Hive this Show. Is, right this is the Hive Gareth. Show, Stephen and Gareth. You're welcome. Uh, now then, so we're in we're in the Hive. We've got in there. You cleaned it out. What are you selling? Uh, Steve, do you want a... Okay. No. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth is the better salesperson. I, I come from public sector. He comes from well, retail. Basically, the, the combination is good. You're the straight man. He's the funny man. Exactly, yeah. Thing. I don't <laughs> think I've ever been called that before. <laughs> <laughs> it works like that, doesn't it? You need somebody yeah. on administration and somebody on sales because yeah. a, 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 an administrator is dour by looks. You know, have you ever seen a happy, um, what do you call it, accountant? No. <laughs> Sorry, accountants <laughs> out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, but they, they, they're fixed into this has got a balance. Whereas yeah. in the sales, it's, it's, it's grey and it's all shades of and light and dark. You sell what you can see. That's pretty exactly. much Gareth's head. <laughs> shades, like, Sh- but I shades think I'm off. starting to learn when it comes to visual merchandising. But yeah, I'll let Gareth describe our beautiful products. Yeah, right, so, so we do have a good mix. So as I say, when we started yeah. out, we yeah. have antiques. We still have antiques and um, vintage pieces in the hive. So at the back of the shop, you'll find a couple of pieces of furniture. And, and Nana. And then, uh, uh, but we have some beautiful things most recently that we brought back from Morocco. So we've got some gorgeous handmade pieces. Did you bring any in? We did. We've got a couple of selections here. Yeah. What have you got? Describe. So yeah. um, this feels like a TV show. I can't think what. It's it Arthur Negus, Ken and Arthur Negus go together. Antiques are us. Go say you've lost me now. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> oh god. I'm, sure, yeah, yeah, I'm only thirty six. Everyone knows that. <laughs> So yeah, that's. Uh, I'll just quickly say. So that's at the back of the shop, and then we stock things like hardwares such as cleaning brushes, eco products, um, a couple of garden pieces such as um, garden twine, um, garden accessories, kitchen accessories. Uh, one of the things we have in the kitchen accessories is a local maker called Nina D. She will be listening today. Hello, Nina. Or uh, as they say in Sweden, because she's Swedish. Hey. Uh, and Nina makes fantastic beech wood uh, coasters and trays with the most beautiful hand uh, painted watercolour designs on top of them and we stock those in the hive and Nina lives in Ochinga myself and supports many small independent businesses. This is when I went in, I actually noticed that you do do support local businesses Absolutely. and they're all individually made, they're not mass produced, they're individually made. The stuff from Morocco is fabulous. Yeah, exactly and this is what we try and do, we try and source things that are made, not manufactured and it's part and parcel of what we try and do in the hive of stocking things that you can't find anywhere else or at least you'll have a, a good job of trying to and when we go to Morocco there's always something beautiful to find we've been five times now in the past 10 years and we always find some makers and uh, creatives there that just make the most fantastic products and they do it every single day as well so they can do it in a really good turnaround so by the time we come to leave Morocco it's all there ready and waiting for us to bring back to Old Chingham. Right so you you've discovered Morocco Oh yes, and then are you uh, any plans to go, Ken? I've been. Have you been? Oh, yeah. Right. Well, it's actually next door, Suta Tetuan, which is on the Excuse border. Excuse you. Did you just sneeze? Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, it's a ferry out of Algeciras, and it goes across to Suta Stroke Tetuan. It's the same place. Fab. But I've seen it on the news since, and it's not a good place because it's all what barbed wire fence, three lots of things Aww. because of the. Uh, people coming up from the south into Africa and to Spain that way around. So yeah. that's 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 political. But we're not getting into that. But Morocco itself is a fabulous place to go. Oh, it's stunning, and the yeah. people are so friendly and welcome. Yeah. Every time we go, it's always a beautiful place. But yeah, we've brought some um, things into the studio to show you. So um, one of the things is a handmade mirror. So of course it's radio, so I'll have to try and describe it. But these, <laughs> um, if you Google it, if you Google Sacred Heart you'll right. see it comes up with the almost like an ornate no you get a church if you do google sacred no, heart you wouldn't. don't, don't you would. google sacred heart okay, go well, to you... vhinterius.co.uk new arrival you'll see on our home page and you will yeah. see these products Stephen yeah. is correct yeah in fact if you go to our website they are on the website right now under uh, new stock yeah. and these sacred hearts also known as mexican hearts 
We have them in um, mirrors, we have them in uh, candle holders and just decorative items. And these are made of um, brass and every single detail of it is done with a hammer and chisel and yeah. a single man by his hand. So it's incredible. It looks gold from here. Well, it's polished brass. Unfortunately, polished it's brass. not gold, otherwise the price would be that of Twice, a, a yeah. gold mirror, yeah. <laughs> and it's a mirror. It looks fabulous with the heart shape. That's a Valentine's uh, I was thing. just about to say, we brought this in specifically because it would make a really lovely uh, Valentine's gift and something that would last a hell of a lot longer than a bunch of roses. So if you want to dedicate <laughs> your love to someone and last it eternal, sorry, there sorry, you go. Uh, sorry to all the florists out there. Red roses are in, aren't they? <laughs> Please say that, Stephen. Red roses are in, if you buy it along with a heart-shaped mirror. Now, I don't want to mention about the carbon footprint that goes with imported flowers, but no, I won't. You know, it's, it's good. Yeah. Don't take it, Dean. So you um, can take over next week, by the way. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so what else have you got there from Morocco? So we've got... Um, roses uh, are red, violets are blue, I've got a sacred heart just for you. Oh, terrible. There you go. Oh, my days. That was all right. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Was that, is that your don't radio... A jingle, yeah, that's what that's, it's gonna be. That's yeah. it, right. Yeah. Can I say we won't be using it? No, no. thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna swiftly move on myself. Um, the second product I've got again available on our website is called a Tam Grout Talisman. Um, I'm sorry, can you say that? In a English? Tam Grout Talisman. A tam Grout. Now, I hope I am saying that correctly. Wow. So, I'm Tam Grout or Tammy Grout, okay, or Tammy Groot. However, depending on your accent, you I can mishear it. But you'd spell it like Tammy Group, wouldn't you? So T A M E G R O U T. Yeah. And long story short, it's a um, it's a village in Morocco, and this green, oh, thank you, right. uh, dark green glazed pottery comes exclusively from this village. And this little tile has uh, been chiselled with a worker bee exclusively for us for manchester for manchester well, as i say we went over there and asked yeah. them to make us a bespoke piece and this is what he created exclusively for us the, and these, the hive and the bee exactly well, so it well. all ties in so these are little talismans and they're just to keep on your person or hanging your home to bring you good luck and uh, positive energy excellent and they've been incredibly popular so they're one of my favorite products dare i ask the price oh, only 15 pounds for a handmade exclusive wow. very rare piece and you don't oh, have to have a cool. tattoo on your leg. Then. You don't have to have a tattoo on your you leg. Have exactly. a, you can have a bee hanging <laughs> around your door. And did you mention how many people have made this? Uh, yeah, there was three artisans involved in making this. So the first one is the potter who made the tile. The second artisan is the person who chisels the bee shape into it. And the third one binds it in brass and puts a little hoop on for hanging on the wall. So Job, it's a collective. Jobs for the lads. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is one thing. Where did you go to? Was it Marrakesh? Yeah, Marrakesh. Right, okay. So you went to the big square. Yeah. And you eat at every lamppost going around the square, don't you? Oh, absolutely. It's yeah, you've got to try them all. <laughs> yeah, there's so many food stalls around there. Where do you actually stay? We've stayed in a couple of places. So we stay mainly in Riyadh, which are um, yeah. Moroccan versions of B&Bs, basically. Yeah. The, the most authentic way to stay in Morocco. But this time we stayed in an apartment right overlooking the square, didn't we? So we could see the action right on top of the I think Not it's too actually, bad. All right. um, going back, was it the 1990s when there was a bomb that went off in Marrakesh? Uh, or 2000s? No, I, I know of it, but I'm not going that, down that road. But go on, tell but the story. the building that the bomb went off in yeah. is basically that building. So where oh, the... Right, yeah. Um, Renovated. The, yeah, so it's it's right. If anyone's been to Marrakesh, as you come down past the, the horse carriages, and on the right hand side you see this like a pharmacy um, it's it's that building there it's a hotel um, and paid a little bit more I think yeah. essentially per night yeah. than we'd paid um, well it's the location the isn't it but honestly you you basically had the equivalent of your own private roof terrace 24-7 yeah. um, yeah. um, which was just the view from your your apartment um so yeah you, you soak up all that atmosphere 24 yeah. 7. did you ever see ab fab when they went to morocco i've not no, <laughs> no but look, i definitely think you need to look yeah, at yeah have a look ab fab in morocco but selling morocco it's an easy sell it's mainly beach for uh, the 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 regular clients type thing but marrakesh weekend breaks that sort of thing yeah and even tangier you can go across one very again from algae series but yeah fabulous country have you been will I have not. You've done South been. Africa, haven't you? I okay. have, yes. Yeah. Where else have you been? I didn't know this. Oh, God. Uh, Quite a few places, I think. Yeah. Oh, really? Um, Australia. Yeah, we got that New last Zealand, time. Yeah. Uh, America, yeah. twice. Yeah. Three times, actually. He's a name dropper. I um, want to show off. Yeah. Gloria Honeyford. Yeah. Oh no, it's Judith Chalmers. She travels. Skiing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. France. Yes. Switzerland. And skiing? 
that's in the same one. And you've just told me two minutes ago you go skiing two, two times. Weeks time, yeah. Thanks. Wow. Well, <laughs> leaving you. I might invite to do it all well. yourself. <laughs> So you can have to survive without me. Yeah, if it's the not show on air in two out. weeks. <laughs> yeah, so because uh, I wasn't here. Yeah, this is a, a it's, it's a disaster in two It'll weeks. He'll send you a text right. message. Press yeah. the button. Press the button. <laughs> exactly. That's it. He nudges me, you know. Yeah, but he's, he's a good lad. He didn't yeah. nudge you today, though, did he? He he's had to physically lean over <laughs> and press the button for you today. <laughs> You're giving my secrets. Away. <laughs> this show is controlled. <laughs> I don't know who by, but it's controlled. <laughs> now then, can we have some more music? to get me out of this little situation now. <laughs> what have we got, Will? We've got uh, Talk Tonight by Oasis. Let's go for it. Hey, look, a new subscriber. And wait for this. You'll love this. Ken has a couple of super guests. Uh, Will and Ken. No. <laughs> Ken has a couple. <laughs> a couple of super guests from the hive on the air right now. This is Alison, who's living in the south of France. Okay. Okay. The, uh, Anne. Annie? No? Okay. Oh, where's her? I think she might have one just second. been coming on to One second, exactly. sorry. One second. That's what I was going to do as an advert. Oh, got it. Oh, no. That's Bruce. Why did that come up as Bruce Melnick when it's Annie? So can, can we count down? Don't forget. Is it Annie Mac? Uh, no, no, it's, it's, it's Anne. Annie. Uh, these are guys I went to see and bought bought from them, saying that I'd heard about them on RA Radio. Oh yeah, they're really nice guys. Fab. She lies. It's, <laughs> <laughs> they're very chatty and articulate. She says uh, it sounds like quite a party going on. Oh. <laughs> and then, then they put it would be with Ken. <laughs> right, okay. Mark is the engineer. So they. Ooh read this. There is something magical and energetic about Ken's shows. If only we could bottle it and sell it to the BBC. If only you could record it and put it out on the <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we're, not, we're not bearing grudges. <laughs> uh, Abby, never. It's our magic Ken, no one else's. He's, he's far too old and won't work for the BBC anyway. Far too old? Shocking. Far too... Bleep, bleep. Good point. We will just have to put up with Manic Tuesdays, it's now called. It's now called Manic Tuesdays to you two, thanks. That's nice though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they're listening wow. and um, making noises. So for the rest of the hour, should we just sit by the light and Don't you dare. <laughs> so I think Will's future projects after skiing should be to set you up with your own YouTube channel or maybe a radio or TV you channel. That'd be good. And do live streams from do, the studio. Do you need electricity for that? <laughs> <laughs> Mouse in a treadmill? All I would say is that don't put your camera on too. Hi, I'm just Are here. you two compass mentors about doing something like a podcast? Well, we're currently trying to, I don't know what I'm leaning into the mic for, we're just currently, uh, we're currently working on our YouTube channel, so we're trying to get together sort of like our intros, outros, jingles, I got and YouTube all that on yesterday. I oh, went right. into it. Oh, right. To ours or, or to... You sent it to me, you said go into YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's you, your first you have, one, is it? So it's not our first, we've been doing it for about two years, but we've never really been sort of like too serious about it. Sorry, what I've got to do, we've got to get some entertainment and news in a bit. Mm -hmm. Are you doing the, the juggling then? Hey. Are you juggling? <laughs> the entertainment. <laughs> no, I'm introducing him to speaking. Oh, right. This lad, when he first came out. Oh, a bit like last week's like... show. Yes. You get used oh, to it, don't was... you? Once yeah. or twice you've slept. He's, he's getting, so no, if, he's, he's if it had come a few weeks ago and we'd like spoke to you, would you just like yeah. looks away kind of thing? No, I wouldn't be as talkative. I don't he's, he's a good lad, but nobody's ever given him the opportunity. Twenty right. <laughs> seconds. He's telling. Him to Are you up. free on Thursday <laughs> yeah. afternoon? Yeah. He's telling him to show up. Join Annie every Thursday. Meanwhile, back in the room. So we've got the hive, we've opened it up, we've all got the stuff in from Morocco and the latest. Where are you going for the future? See, I'll, I'll let you take over this for the future because we are due to hopefully expand, aren't we? Uh, Is that shop yes. wise? Uh, shop wise, <coughs> it's kind of more the beverage bar. So we have a coffee trailer in the yard that is a. Um, 
I just got that joke. <laughs> that, that was a way that joke on it. That took you a while. Ah. It didn't even just say the comment. It did the hand gesture. I know, well. yeah. Like, and this is after I've had a slice of Colin the Caterpillar cake. <laughs> just the one. Well, we're going. Come on. <laughs> yes, Colin the Caterpillar's sadly declined. Yeah. But meanwhile, back at the expansion. What does uh, it say? Feeds 10. <laughs> There's only four in here. Yeah, that's the biggest line, isn't it? Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll let C talk about it, but it's more of an expansion of our uh, coffee side of the business. So this is. Explain this, about that. Sorry, I jumped in too no, fast. Go on. This is the caravan at the front. Yes, caravan, coffee trailer, and it's in hot the water bottles. And hot water bottles, yes. yes so I was have there. An outside seating area where you can sit We like to look after the aged. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for that. <laughs> uh, we, have, <laughs> we have an outside seating area where you can hug a hot water bottle, sit under the heaters, and enjoy a nice speciality coffee from ourselves. But in the future, you'll be able to sit inside because. Yeah, so um, Got a roof. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. Going forward, so those two um, grey shuttered buildings that are to the side and in front of yeah. the hive. That's, um, a, that's what everybody sees, by the way. Oh, first of oh all. my god, it's a crime! Yeah. Yeah. Um, Can you not put an advert on the shutter? The hive. It, it did actually go through my mind to do that and to even like get the keys and open the the shutters and have window adverts and stuff yeah. like that from the current uh, tenant of the shops. But um, but. Uh, if everything goes to plan, the tenancy should be coming to an end in the next two months, um, and we should be taking over the tenancy. And um, will you be allowed to sell Irish jig music? Absolutely not. I've banned it myself, <laughs> Ken. <laughs> Thousands of them. These are the, the shop, if you've not had a look on our YouTube channel, just search um, VH underscore in series on YouTube, or the shopkeepers, and you should see our channel. Um, and yeah, one of the most recent videos is just of the inside of these two shops and honestly there are tens of thousands of Irish CDs and DVDs. I didn't even know people were still buying CDs. Irish dancing's in? Oh, Apparently Jesus. so. Come <laughs> well, then, Ken, show us your... Uh, your yeah, no, 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 my jigs are only for... You just tap on the table and pretend you do it. Yeah, <laughs> my jigs are only for after hours and a few drinks. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the plan going forward will be that the, the two shop units, um, so 31 and 32, will become the the hospitality side. So what is currently the beverage bar, what's currently the catering trailer, will be moved into those two shops. However... Uh, I don't want to sound like David from um, Ships Creek, the uh, the very good TV series. Um, however, David does describe a business plan, and the business plan is that he wants it to be like a coffee shop, but he doesn't want it to be a coffee shop. It isn't going to be a bar, but it's going to serve alcohol, it's going to serve coffee. Um, so we're not quite sure what it is going to be in terms of thinking, but we want it to serve um, provisions, refill options so things like your um eggs that have been laid locally so like from a local farm we want to supply milk by a refill station that is from a local farm um, we want to supply some high quality like pastas and jarred um, foods um, and pretty much like we don't want to go too much into a food experience do we so we want to offer some sandwiches hot and cold sandwiches um, and some breakfast options and stuff like that but we won't be coming a cafe. We're not going to be doing full English breakfast. Well, that leaves like me that. in, apart from getting over the shock of what that word was you just said. I, I two know. I, ago. I've seen the panic. That's why I have to continue up with the TV yeah, series. Other words and no, no, it, no. Shit's Creek is a um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a village. S C H I T T. Z, if you've never heard you. of Shit's Creek, listeners, please send in hate mail because yeah. that is the best program going. And if you don't know what, have it you is, got Netflix? Is can can we just move quickly <laughs> on? Because <laughs> that's <laughs> shocking. Do, do you have Netflix? <laughs> Watch our Netflix. You need fabulous. to search. Right, don't say the word. <laughs> I'll look at the end. S H one T. Yeah, I'll look at it. But there we go. Will's looking at me as though I, yeah, my jaw dropped. He's looking at me, and I'm looking at him, and he goes, "Yeah." I know that one. No, no, yeah, no. Apart from you. Me. Yeah. yeah, meanwhile, I'll get electricity next week. However, I'm thinking, do you have the footfall down that road for food? Because it's got, obviously got to be done on the day. And do you have fresh milk, of course? Just, have you got the footfall for it? We think so, yeah, because the, the current setup that we've got, so the Hive General Storm Beverage Bar has a... Um, a really popular regular footfall of locals um, and the main thing for us about our location is um, it being a heart of the community 
if we were to be in Altrincham Town Centre, it would be you'd have a couple of regulars coming in, maybe, but then you'd have out of town visitors. And there's nothing wrong with out of town visitors, we have plenty of out of town visitors as well. However, for us, being where we are on the edge of Altrincham Town Centre, we want it to be more of a convenience and a, a home away from home for the local residents. Well, it's niche, isn't it? Yeah. And it's also, you're almost going to be the corner shop. Exactly that. Yeah. So those photos that we've mentioned that are available on our blog, on our website, vhsavious.co.uk, <laughs> um, those photos that you seen last night, again, like that is honestly what we aspire to create, is that community yeah. um, vibe and that community spirit. There's so many people that come into our shop that we've, you know, we've seen um, three-year-old babies now, like that were being carried by the mums, and like you know, we're now talking to like three-year-olds that we've yeah. seen grow up. Um, unfortunately, we've had sad times where we've seen pets and um, relatives pass away from like customers. We've seen people move to the area, people move away from the area, and we basically just feel like we're a part of the community. We've you know invited to barbecues and breakfasts and you know yeah. that's, um, that's actually very really heartwarming that there's still that out there I don't personally see what people like about us <laughs> <laughs> I have put the word around but yeah. still, I still keep it getting attracted to you but if you look at where you are it's got no forecourt because it's, it's, it's not there you can park across the road and got that yeah but behind you there's rows and rows of uh, houses right the way back to Manchester Road is it, it goes, yeah, yeah so it goes all the way down to um obviously initially the road behind us that runs come kind of like parallel with the sort of like the hive yeah um is then Hart Street then you go on to Barrington and then yeah, you Barrington. go on to um whatever it is between mm -hmm. Hazel Road I think yeah. it is and then um, onto the main A56 Manchester yeah, Road there. so there's quite a big area isn't it if you think about it you know what's surprising as well a lot of our regulars actually come from the other side of navigation um so they make the the journey from up near Deansgate Lane they'll so walk that's Broadheath down. basically or is it um, Broadheath on that side so side I think so yeah. near to uh, Wellington High School so yes. they'll walk down from like Wellington High yeah. School and come to the Hive um, obviously the majority of our customers then come from the roads that are um, you know just Behind. stones throw so yeah. like Ashton yeah. and Derby Street and stuff like that um, so yeah it's you know and it's uh, it's quite unusual the fact that we can actually, you know, the majority of the regulars that come in, we can we can tell you like what house they live in, who you the are, neighbours are, who, and, and you know the names. Yeah, yeah uh, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. So yeah, like, it's yeah, it's just it's just bonkers, really. Yeah. Um, but talking about that, yeah, don't you have a couple of shout outs you wanted to do? Yeah, a uh, quick shout out to Gemma, who is from Timperley. She's listening right now and sending me messages. Hi, Gemma. Hi, Gemma. Um, but yeah, a couple of other shout outs to local businesses. As we say, we always like to. Um, support local businesses. The first one is um, Mabel Campervan. She's based in Timpley, she not? Uh, Sorry, uh, is that Campervan her surname? No. <laughs> so the Mabel, lady... Mabel isn't even her first name. <laughs> so um, it, the lady's name is called Katie. Katie's fabulous. And Hi, Katie. Mad as a box of frogs. I might get it wrong, but I believe she's also... Okay. Is it Timpley <laughs> Tales? I'm not too sure. I think the one it's I'm simply Tales now. as well. So she's got like a dog walking business in Oh, got it, right. Um, and Mabel. I thought she told stories when you said <laughs> Tales. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah, she, um, she has a camper van called Mabel. It's a VW camper van and you can hire it out. It's based in Timpley and she actually sent a little joke. I'm, I will apologise to this in advance. It's a terrible radio joke. Oh, do we grow now? Yes. <laughs> well, she said she used to think that all radios had antennae. Then she realised it was a stereotype. Oh, <laughs> that was tumbleweeds, tumbleweeds. <laughs> so yeah, shout out to you. Oh, Katie. was that it? Was that the joke? That was <laughs> the joke. Oh, wow. <laughs> Straight over <laughs> <in> your head. <laughs> and uh, shout out also to uh, a wonderful woman, um, Haley from Off the Wheat and Track. If you oh, love Haley. Oh, do you know her? Yeah, been fabulous. on the show. Yes. Oh, that Haley was one of my first guests, or our really? first guests, because I was with Stephen in those days, and we did Zoom. You know that thing that yeah, everybody yeah. had in those days. Hayley was one of our first guests. And I've never recovered since. <laughs> yeah, She's like. probably in hiding now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Hayley from Off The Wheat and Track, if you don't know, she um, owns and runs a fantastic cafe slash deli just on Oxford Road, and they specialise in gluten-free food. So if you are a celiac, it's an amazing place to go and get some grub. 
Do you get the stuff off her? Not yet, but if this we ever did want to, she's fantastic at um, wholesaling her gluten free products. Well, what well. I'll do, I'll be the middleman, you come through me and I'll go speak to Hayley. Is that all right, Deal? Absol you mean this is a taste tester yeah. by the cakes, is that what you mean? Listen, we're not doing the expansion thing again. <laughs> Hayley's like, I sent 10 pies down, so you know, we only got five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, shout out to her. She's a, a fantastic woman yeah. and uh, she herself supports local businesses yeah. and independent businesses. She shops with ourselves and it's really wonderful that we have these people, um, customers and business owners alike, yeah. support us and we support them just as much. It's, I, I was walking through, I, <laughs> I walked through Alton quite a lot <laughs> and I go into various places and I met Rihanna and she is across from or down the same road, Oxford Road, as uh, California coffee and wine who sponsored us last month yeah so well done california coffee and wine rihanna i'm going to get her back on the show because she's got hairdressers but she calls it a barber she's also got uh, clothes as in really good clothes and shoes is and this the new shop is she about it, two three months uh, the, uh, late last year in fact november right. december i think i can't remember. Yeah. time time flies with me but I went in to see her the other day, absolutely fabulous. So that's Rihanna. I'm going to get back in on there. Uh, we'll talk to her. Yeah, well. I did walk past the shop, and the aesthetic is absolutely incredible. Isn't it just? Really good idea. Yeah. So if you want a barber, <laughs> wrong word, I don't like barber. It's hairdresser, isn't it? Uh, anyway, barber. So uh, she does that, and I'd say fabulous clothes and what have you. But she has got a niche market as well. But again, another entrepreneur. She's from down south. And she came north and she loves it up here. Which Wonderful. Is great. Yeah, and doing so. something that no one else that I know of is doing as well. So again, you, you find uniqueness in these businesses yeah. and they do something that not chain stores and big stores can ever, ever do. So it's wonderful. Yeah. So if you keep your sanity, you're <laughs> just, all right. Just so what's that word we're going to use now? Uh, Will? <laughs> it's called? Uh, crazy. There we go. Uh, no, Barclay. There we go. <coughs> It was a link. Neil. Neil. <laughs> have, you, have you got another technical assistant that Will doesn't know about? That was a ten year I just, uh, that's why he's not stressing about you not being in it this week. <laughs> Neil. No, no, what happens is in my mind he's gone on ski. Bye. <laughs> Neil's coming in next week. Neil's already lined up. <laughs> Great, it's Kate. That's what we're going to make it home. I'm guessing, no. did, he say, uh, did he say Faye? Is that your sister? Or? Yeah. Oh, All right, you go, but that's never going to make it it's home. Not, so, yeah, Ken, don't, me, don't yeah. rely, you know, did you get the cake? <laughs> 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 it's going to cause a domestic. <laughs> love, love, love. No, I this is all the <clears> afternoons <throat> with Ken. Yeah, Ken Garrity, I'm surrounded by friends this afternoon. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, quite, a, quite an afternoon we're having here. Uh, a bit manic, I would say. Um, Will, you're actually going off and leaving me, I believe, next week, is it? Or week after? Uh, well, next week and the week after. Right, this is news to me. It's great, isn't it, to have this? <laughs> Either you two free next week to... Yeah, 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 Gareth's free. I'll yeah. send him down. There we go. <laughs> As <laughs> mentioned, I'm washing my hair. All one of them. <laughs> right, so it's the hive... Bar one. Bar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, are you off to skiing where? Uh, Chamonix in France. Right. Is it good for summer, isn't it? It's all right for summer, mm. though, yeah. Yeah, you've done skiing before? <laughs> yes, since I was about 10. God, this life. Expert. It's a life, isn't it? <laughs> I've <laughs> never been skiing. I don't think I would trust myself. I think I would either end up in an avalanche or just like in a tree or something like that. <laughs> you can only request avalanches, it's not guaranteed. Yeah, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> the only time I've ever actually injured myself was at the chill factor. Oh really? So that's, oh. A, that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah, and believe it or not, I did my shouldering at uh, what is it called? Is it uh, Rosendale? Yeah. Ron Rosendale Sky S Dry Ski Slope, if I can say it properly. So my arm coming down, somebody sort of like nudged me over, fell over, arm got stuck in the matting, Ouch. Oh, ripped out my <laughs> ripped out my shoulder. Uh, two vertebrae and three ribs. Well, thanks, Ken. That's me. Definitely yeah, and I'm going. Skiing. And I'm going. I think I'm bruised. Right? <laughs> three days later, when my whole body starts to lock up, the wow. doctor says, "I think you better go and get some treatment." Mm. So anyway, yeah. So not a good place to go. Sorry, mm. Rosendale. It was a really good night, Just, but uh, not. Don't fall over. My trip, right? yeah. 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 No. No. I'm fall over in the there. snow. It's a lot easier. Can you not buy one of those like special bags or jackets or something where like if you think you're going to have an accident, you inflate it. Inflate. Yeah. <laughs> <James Bond. laughs> yeah. 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 Fly, off the, fly off the mountain or that sort I of am that sort of yeah. person I went away with a first aid box <laughs> <laughs> ski holidays are really really good honest yeah I have been skiing since by the way in the 
the snow. And in fact, Pete Scottson did his black run on uh, the world's most notorious ski slope. Sorry, Pete, I've forgotten the name of it. But him and his son went down it last week. And he survived. Yeah, and uh, by the way. Well done, Pete. <laughs> yeah, well done, Pete. And he actually had a great interview with Susie Mathis. And uh, that's on Radio Alti Mixed Cloud coming up. So Pete Scottson and, and Susie Mathis. Mathis, if I can say the word right. Do you remember her? Radio Piccadilly, Piccadilly Radio. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. Blanky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I'm not that old. I'm 36. I keep telling you. Plus Pete, 100. Pete's, Pete's older than me. Anyway, so he carries on there. So, <laughs> the hive. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a nightmare tonight. God, I'm going to say the hive. Good, yeah. Okay. Subliminal messaging. It is, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you've had our guests on, your guests on as well now, your show, my show. I just turned it <laughs> off. And uh, the future is these two shops at the front. Yes. Right. When's this going to happen? This year? Yeah, so we'd um, the the plan over the past few months has been that uh, the current occupier of the shops was going to retire in December uh, 2023, um, and we were starting to look at investigating buying everything from the landlord, um, who had agreed that we could potentially buy everything. So and the, the Irish tapes. Shops. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah they'll, they'll be thrown in for free. Um, however, um, things have changed with the current tenant um, and he will be giving it up in the next few weeks or the next two months. Um, and if that does happen, um, we again, we have checked with the landlady. Uh, if that does happen, we'll just be taking over the lease for the time being um, and trying to figure out, or figure out how to fund um, the expansion, really. Sell more coffee? I think that's yeah. <laughs> but this, this yeah, honestly, it's so complicated. Running your own business is fun for the the community side of it. Yeah. Um, making the coffees, sourcing the stock, serving the customers, it's great. Like, wouldn't change it. However, when it then comes to all the back office stuff of your Admin. bookkeeping, yeah. your tax Fine. returns, yeah. um, balancing kind of like you know what money because January, February for retail is. Oh. It is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, hospitality side seems to be fine, retail side, um, so you've got to kind of like remember to keep money aside from November and December for January and February. Um, so yeah, that's all the complicated side. So we need to, we've got a couple of meetings this week with um, experts um, from the Manchester Grow Pub. Um, so we're going to um, have an interview with someone from there who's going to look at sort of like mentoring us I think. Can you give me that name again? Manchester? The Manchester Grove Pub if you remember correctly. Is this the, the Manchester Grove Pub or yeah. the Manchester Grove Enterprise or something like that um, but okay. we know a few local businesses that have used them yeah. um, and basically it's almost what I visualise it's a bit like Dragon's Den but instead of them giving you money they give you their expertise Strange enough got a story about Dragon's Den coming oh, up oh go on then yeah, oh. no no no, no. Oh, is that not a link alright then no 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 I could in fact I'll use it yes well done thank you go on that. then I'll use it yeah two lads from Ermston got £80,000 off the Dragons oh really yes and are they, these not going to be the sofa ones are they no 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 no, no right no these this is brand new hot off the press and I think it must have happened obviously in the last couple of days but uh, if I can find my notes, they actually went to obviously down to Dragon's Den and uh, offered this app. And the app does buy from your local shops. Okay. okay. And Are you they from Ermston? No, because yes. there's a fan yeah, I was gonna say I know about that app. There's yeah. a fantastic app in Ermston and there's a lot of independent businesses signed up for that. So that's, yeah, I have heard of that. That's the one. It's going global. Brilliant. Oh, really? Well national anyway for starters, but global eventually. Yeah, they get calls from all over the country and uh, Northern Ireland and they want them to uh, be franchises for this uh, app. And uh, obviously it's gonna go online soon, so look out for it. And it's something called uh, Shop Local is the yeah. app. And it's you know, and you can get your deliveries done through that way. I think that's something. Was it? Uh, did it come about during lockdown? I yes, think, these are the two lads. Yeah. Um, but again, entrepreneurs, absolutely brilliant. So there you are. Thank you for the link. Yes, no <laughs> worries at all. You yeah. can have your own show. <laughs> week. I keep telling you this. Do you, do you think I'm trying to push it on to you? By <laughs> <the chance? laughs> it's almost well. We didn't actually even know you had anything about Dragon's Den, but it just all worked. It's out, just it? one of those little things that uh, niche uh, things that I have. However, we're going to get Will to do some work, aren't we, before he falls asleep. Here we go, Will. <laughs> Let's have some weather. Uh, this afternoon, it will be a dry, um, dry with a mix of bright spells and areas of cloud. 
Winds will be light with highs of 8. Tonight will continue calm, dry and there will be largely clear skies throughout. A few of patchy, uh, patches of mist and fog may again form in places, however with lows of 1. Tomorrow will continue dry with bright spells and a few patches of cloud for most of the day. However, a band of cloud and rain will move in from the northwest by the end of the day, turning breezier with highs of 7 and lows of 3. With the oh. overall uh, outcome being it is getting warmer. Thank you, Will. There we go. A plan insurance, as it said, uh, Stamford New Road, and they'll give you plenty of quotes. Really nice people in there as well. I've got another couple of sponsors Helpful Homes Limited of Sale, and their slogan is Weekends are for fun, not for cleaning. And if you need your home cleaning, contact Helpful Homes in Sale. And also, we have our own Bruce Melnick, who's pushing out Visit Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. 80 launches this year, by the way, lads. 80 launches out of Kennedy Space Centre. Really? Yeah, I've actually seen a rocket go up. I think it was a Titan rocket with cargo, the guy said. It's got cargo on. It might have been a satellite, I don't know. But I've actually also seen a, a shuttle go off. Bruce might have been on it. I don't know. He did He did two, two, two Bruce. Uh, he did two shuttles. Uh, one was uh, four days and one was nine days. So there's a lot much, uh, a lot more space activity than we actually realise. Then there's so much more going on now, uh, and of course you've got so many things like balloons going. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> that wasn't in the script, was it? Yeah. So anyway, however, we've got entertainment coming up now. So if you don't mind, we're going to have a little break with Will, who's going to tell us all about what's happening at the Bowden Rooms. So at the Bowden Rooms, we have uh, Sir Jeff Hurst in conversation on Thursday the 16th of March at 7.30pm. Uh, tickets are £32.50. Where can you buy those from, Ken? Uh, that's from www.bowdentickets.co.uk oh, or bowdenrooms.co.uk. How many W's did I do then? Was it two or three? You stopped, but yeah. I think yeah you yeah, might have missed a dot out. Do you reckon that Prosecco's kicking in? Definitely. <laughs> Uh, Sir Jeff made his name with club side West Ham United, with whom he made 499 league and cup appearances, scoring 248 goals. He was a uh, player of the year three times and won the FA World Cup, uh, FA Cup with West Ham in 1964 and the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1965. He also scored a hat trick in the 1966 World Cup final. Was you there? I was not. Oh, I wish sure. I was. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember it, you two? World Cup final 1966. The yeah, world, yeah, I remember it. Oh, yeah. The world stopped yeah. that you day. Yeah. 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 Anything else happening at the Bowden Rooms? Uh, we've got Faulty Towers, the dining experience, uh, which is a Mother's Day special. Uh, straight from London's West End via the legendary Sydney Opera House, this international sensation is now returning due to an overwhelming popular demand to the Bowden Rooms on Sunday, the 19th of March for a Mother's Day special dining experience at 12 noon and 5 p.m. Tickets are £58.25 for adults and £38.25 for children. They also have some new shows later that year. August the 18th, they have Flash, which is a tribute to Queen, as you said. Flash yes, Gordon. Yes, Flash Gordon, yeah. And also Sound and Vision of David Bowie, Friday the 22nd of September. And finally, Rock on Tommy for one night, Thursday, the 26th of October, with Bobby Cannon, part of Cannon and Ball, part of the Cannon and Ball Act. 7 p.m. tickets are on sale now from £26.40. At www.bodentickets.co.uk. There we go, we got that far there. So, and also, there's a final thing there, you got? Yeah, the uh, Bowden Rooms are a recent, a recent winner at the Hitched Wedding Awards 2023. And they are to host a wedding showcase next month on my birthday, the Sunday, oh, the 5th of March. There was a hint Fabulous, for you. Yeah. Yeah. I can Don't see get the presents, Ken. Yeah, I, I, no, it's right. just calling the caterpillar again. <laughs> <laughs> All the caterpillars are available. <laughs> <laughs> now then, what else have we got? Oh, we got uh, Will Young, him of uh, X Factor, was it? Uh, one man play at home, H O M E Manchester. Now, a lot of people don't know where home is. It's not your house. It's a place by Castlefield Deansgate Railway Station, yeah? Underneath the arches. Uh, and it's called First Street, is the area. And you'll find it, um, Will Young will be in a new production of a one man play by award winning Stockport writer Simon Stevens. And it's early next year, it's this year actually, February 22nd to 11th of March. 
and the score is by Mark Eitzel and directed by Manchester based Kirk Jameson and it's called Song From Far Away and it's Jung's first live theatre role in a decade in fact when he was on his interview it's 14 years ago since he was last performing in Manchester so that's, that's good um, Lion King is on now at yeah, the Palace yeah. Theatre 11th of March that wasn't me that was the phone <laughs> and uh, uh, tickets are from £20 plus booking fee at the Palace Theatre and in May sorry March uh, My Fair Lady uh, starts 22nd of March to the 1st of April uh, also The Bodyguard is in April and The King and I in May so they're all the Palace Theatre now we're at the Garrick and at the moment we've got uh, let me just get this right uh <laughs> I can't find it. Yes, there we go. Shakespeare in Love. Absolutely going down the storm. Five star reviews. Uh, almost sold out. There are tickets for tonight, I've noticed, on the downstairs. And uh, uh, it's on till the, for the rest of the week, till Saturday. So that's Shakespeare in Love. You want to come down. Brilliant uh, performances here at the Garrick, 7.30 p.m. Now then, we've got one or two little shows coming up called Woman Like Me, The Little Mix Show, on Wednesday the 15th of uh, Feb. Cinderella, The Adult Panto, if, if you're into that sort of thing. Thursday the 16th and Manford's Comedy Club that's a Jason Manford uh, thing there where he's got different uh, comedians coming in and that's on the Friday the 17th at 8 o'clock at night uh, later on in March we've got The Father and also for children in March we've got from the 5th of uh, sorry for eight months, from the 13th onwards to the 18th is Matilda the Musical so if you've got children you want to keep them occupied Matilda the Musical now saying that there's one or two uh, activities around at the moment so let me get you fit and healthy for the uh, spring so we've now got Delamere Forest Run 5k or 10k on Sunday the 5th of March it starts at 9am and obviously it's at Delamere Forest entry fee is £22 for the 5k and £24.75 for the 10k and that's from customer relations at forestryengland.co.uk now then Manchester Marathon is on Sunday the 16th of April be warned you too it clogs up all the streets around here doesn't it oh don't worry Gareth's already prepared are you yeah oh yeah yeah he's already ready for are it. you gonna have the bottles out front uh well he was uh he woke me up um quite early the other morning saying got to remember got to remember the marathon's on the 16th yes Totally missed that it was the 16th of April. He thought it was February. <laughs> Close. Well, there you go. There's, a, there's another plug for it. 16th of April. They expect 24,000 runners. I think it's the fourth biggest in Europe. And they're raising £2 million, hopefully. Altering will get the uh, runners mid morning along Stockport Road, coming into town, around the town centre, and out through Woodlands Parkway. Are we allowed to do a plug? Go for it. Point? Uh, so, last year, it actually turned out to be, I think, the best um, event for us. So the marathon comes over the flyover, um, round the town centre and then back over the flyover again. And obviously just at the bottom of the steps of that flyover, conveniently located, is the Hive by the H Interiors serving beverages. All day? All day, yes. There we go. We'll, we'll be open all day for the marathon. There's the plan. I might get Gareth out with on those little uh, sort of like sandwich boards and like thingy trays. Uh, you won't be doing your radio show that day then? No, not that day, no. <laughs> <laughs> I need a day off to do that, don't you? <laughs> Sales Sports Club Half Term, which is again for children, 13th to 17th of February. Children's activities, drop them off at 8.15. Don't forget to pick them up at 4 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, between 8.15 and 10.30, drop them off. And between 4 and 5.30, pick them up. And this is at the, uh, oh, I didn't put it down, but never mind. You can find out if you uh, Google it. So Sales Sports Club, and it's obviously probably Dame Road area, I would think. Uh, full range of activities from football, dodgeball, cricket, hockey, table tennis, archery, and contact sports. Um, also, you can, oh, here we go, I've got the link for you. It's sale-sports-club, so that's sale-sports-club, dot class for number four kids, class four kids, there we go. Another one for you, if you tour into this, it's Sail Water Park BMF, British Military Fitness. Absolutely not. I think it's, I think <laughs> I've it's seen what, that. No way. <laughs> I think it's what we all need. My nephew runs it, apparently. Oh, really? Knows. Yeah, yeah. So it's each week at Sale Water Park and other dates as well. And uh, Brunwood Park in Cheadle Hume. So there you go. So contact British Military Fitness. Excuse me a second. <coughs> I'm drying up. That's so the there thought we go. of the, uh, the fitness for you, isn't it, Ken? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Randall's Jewelers on George Street have Valentine specials on diamonds, watches, and jewelry. <coughs> uh, 
Uh, Altrincham uh, Berry Trams. Council are looking for trams later than 11.55 to take home revelers in safety. Well so that, done. That yeah. should be good for uh, work, work, workers. Work workers, yeah. yeah. Uh, my girlfriend works very late sometimes, so that would be uh, very helpful. All right, thank you for that. Sorry, choking on my... Uh, I think it was Colin the Caterpillar got his own <laughs> back there. <laughs> Sorry about that. So here we go, uh, a bit more music there, Will. Yes, we have uh, Lightning Bolt by uh, Jake Bug. <laughs> To, uh, to have there for who's just joined forces with online interpreting service Sign Live to provide deaf customers with interpretation in British Sign Language BSL when using the contact at the airport, which is good. Stephen's um, showing you a little bit of sign language now, which we learnt off one of our regular customers, didn't we? Yes. Yeah, no, no, that's. That's sign language. Uh, you, sorry. Well, that's one word in sign language. Word. That's, that's not that's all. Well, they can't see it on the radio. <laughs> no, uh, no, that's it. But you've got a guest cam. What do you think I, it is? I want a cup of tea or coffee. Exactly. Yeah, that, I can, that is tea. I can't remember what coffee is. Well, coffee. That's, oh, that's coffee. Well, that's yeah. universal. That's oh. universal. Well, this tea, I think that's... Is that coffee? That was your phone. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> your phone's ringing. I can't remember, but it's definitely two. So, yeah, the yeah. one with your little pinky out is the tea, yeah. apparently. And that's thank you. So yeah. you okay. And um, what's the... Did you read those out? You didn't, did you? You no, let me down, Will. Didn't. Let me get you to work again. Go on, read those out for me. Okay. So, uh, these, he's given me a list of the top five eateries in the area. So we've got at number five, we've got uh, the Downs. So, uh, sorry, res how do you say that, Ken? I would Go say, on. let's have a look. Where is it? This one here. Uh, Rasisa. Rasisa. Uh, the term Rasisa is derived from the 15th century word Rasisi, I think, which means to satisfy one's hunger, which would work in That's an Indian restaurant on the Downs, yeah, is it? Great yeah. name. Uh, number four, we've got Essence, uh, Manchester Road uh, are in Broadheath, lovely Indian food. Correct. Uh, number three, we've got The Romper at Ringray. Uh, we've got... Good food, good food there, I've been. Have you been? Yeah, yeah. pub grub. Yeah, yeah, we've been yeah, it's a yeah, it's good. Pub with a traditional, uh, with a menu full of traditional British dishes and family and a family-friendly vibe. Yes, it is. Yeah. And what's the leading one? Number, well, number two is Jardim Radizio. Yeah, that's it. It's the uh, uh, South American one. In Stamford New Road, through uh, the quote here is through years of experience cooking by fire, we've had, we have mastered our craft to bring authentic Radizio cooking techniques to the table. Yeah, this is South American food where they cut the carpet at the table. The gent is lovely. Isn't he's it? He's a really, really nice yeah. guy, the guy who owns it. Yes, uh, I don't think I can mention where he's from, but he does come from a, a very well-established business that yeah. was in Manchester. Yeah. And Pauline is, is still there. She looks after you when you come in. You know what, in all honesty, we've not actually been to his current ah, um, set up, so we've not been to Jardim. We've been to the previous one. You knew him um, before. And we do know him, yeah. um, but it is is. It's on our list it's of our next to place sure, to go. Yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. It's opposite Grant Tees, we all went there. Chris and his uh, great crowd at the coffee place across the road there. And it's the old post office, that's yes. right. Yeah, so that's yeah. great. And what's number one, Will? Number one is Bao Chow. Bao Chow. Bao Chow, uh, Serving innovative contemporary fusion fizzy, uh, cuisine inspired by Asian flavours, which is in the square in Hale Barnes. Yeah, that's the one on the front. I think it's changed its name three times, unfortunately. Now I know why Will left that, uh, that, left that off first time. Yeah, that, it's that has definitely, definitely tested you. Yeah. Listen, listen, he's got to learn somehow. He can't keep going on ski holidays all the I time. I can't pronounce <laughs> the uh, the restaurant that is opposite Nerd Cafe, the Trey... Oh, Chichichio. Chichichio. Yeah, it means I... three fat men. Is that what yeah, you mean? Oh, you you <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Don't you two look at me. Oh. <laughs> no. Yeah, Nerd, by the way, have now got a uh, silent disco coming up on the 19th we of February. We love the Nerd Gang. Have fantastic you been in there? Place. Yeah, lovely Isn't place, it? fantastic owners. Yeah, aren't they just nice? Yeah, uh, it's the games downstairs, yep. so it's a gaming place. Doesn't mean to, it's poker or <laughs> blackjack. It's games as you used to know, Monopoly yep. and that sort of thing. Uh, absolutely fabulous, and it's healthy food, and that's their that's their thing, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. So nerd is on Tesco Bridge, I call it. Tesco yeah. Bridge, yeah. Moss Street, yeah, Moss yeah Lane. that's it. Yeah. Moss, Lane. Moss Lane, that's the one. Yeah, have you been in there? As you say, yeah, yeah. yeah we've yeah. been to uh, been to nerd um, and tried the. Uh, I think what did we have? Was it you coffee? You had and milkshake. Milkshakes? We had coffee, and yeah, the the vibe is really lovely, really family friendly. 
and I say the owners can't do enough for you to make you welcome. It's a really great place to go. Yeah, I went in there when they first opened, and they've been on the show as well. Fab. And uh, lovely, lovely people. Uh, but as I say, it's, uh, that's on the 19th of February. Uh, you have to book it, by the way, because I went in the other day, and they're saying now you have to book for weekends. So if you want to sit downstairs with your gaming, book it ahead. So have a look at Nerd's website. I'm sure it's got one somewhere. Um, one I haven't mentioned is, again, going back to fitness and health, the 10K Marathon at Watersons, uh, Hale, and that's on the Sunday 19th of February, £25 entry fee, or Ashley Hall 5K and 10K Fun Run. So um, have a look at those. Uh, you'll find that Watersons have got the, uh, the details, and uh, if you Google Watersons, they're in Hale as well. Uh, I think I mentioned everybody else apart from myself running which I'm not going to do uh, we're coming towards the end of our show say what Can I've uh, worked up a sweat all these sorts of 5k's <laughs> 10k's marathons there's lots British go- military fitness yeah there's everything. lots there's lots going on can I say thank you for you two for being so quiet and shy <laughs> <laughs> you're most welcome <laughs> and uh, will you be taking over the Thursday show Stephen Carbus would like to know I'm sure uh, well, yeah, a couple of our uh, listeners our listeners and uh, followers on Instagram have messaged us saying please let it be true so we, you never know we might get our own show well, and, and, one and, customer's just actually texting now saying please stop talking about runs I'm currently eating a bag of Harry Potter <laughs> 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 any more, any more uh, shout outs for your clients um, I think we've probably just got to say a big thank you to everyone out there yeah um, just a say serious moment thank you so much to all of our uh, regular customers that come and continually support the hive Ken mentioned earlier also there's a lot of um, things going around in terms of uh, cost of living crises and stuff like that um, and honestly you know it really does mean the world tells that people still come they'll buy buy from us and yeah. it, it keeps us in business it's not going to some CEO who's got like an offshore bank account or man like me and a, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly it really does you know and anything any any sales um, it's just going to help with the future expansion plans as okay, well. Okay, so I'm new to Altingham, where do we find you? So it's Grosvenor Road, so if you're coming into Altingham, the best way is if you're on foot, go to Altingham Interchange and just follow the um, the tram line down towards Navigation Road. Not on the tram line? Not on the tram line, <laughs> otherwise you'll be walking back again. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Grosvenor Road, so it's a road that leads um, between Altingham Interchange and Navigation Road. That's brilliant because uh, you go past Icon, is it, on the corner? Yeah. yeah. And lead down there and coming back the other way, you're going past the railway people and the car park at the Navigation Road station. Yeah, and, and just uh, if you do get lost, please do check us out on at VH Interiors on our uh, social media handles and our website where you can find all the details to get to our shop very, very easily. And you can shop online as well. Right, now this is for you too. Will's picked it out. I've not got anything to do with it. Oh, God, here we go. It's called Rock the Casbah. From Morocco, Woo! by the, cl- the Clash. Go on, it will. Choice. Thank you very much. Have a good week. Is that all right? Very good choice. Uh, yeah. I like. yeah, no. Have a call. Hello. Too late now for phonies. <laughs> hey. Hello. I'm fine. The hive right in front of me, yes. Y- yes. Uh, yeah, what happens is I'm trying to butter them up to try to take over Thursday afternoons. <laughs> Seriously. If oh, one second, I've got to go off air. One second, stay there, don't move. I've got ten seconds, I think. Uh, five, four, I need the toilet as well. Three, two, unless I'm on it over, I don't know. It's gone now, right? We're off the air. Sorry about that. When for? Yep, they they very much are, and they could do midnight to six a.m. shift. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what I'll do, so if I introduce them to you, they know of you by the way, by the way. Yeah, so I'll just connect you two together, not now, uh, and then uh, you can work out what you want to do with them. 
I'll do that. I'll do that immediately. I put the phone down. Did you like the show then? Is that Rod? <laughs> Ask him over Shit's Creek. Are we allowed to mention Shit's Creek? <laughs> Well, it was my second birthday, so so uh, so we all had a bit of uh, prosecco to help as well. <laughs> it was no, it was Gorm, uh, Col, uh, the caterpillar. Um, the caterpillar. Colin the caterpillar. Colin the caterpillar. <laughs> Thomas the tank engine is next week. <laughs> like right. I'll like pop in touch throw. with you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rod. Take care. Bye. You two have got a job. <laughs> no, seriously. So, as you'll have seen, we've just done Radio Alty. Um Obviously, it's now on YouTube, um, parts of the uh, the show. Um, unfortunately, the DJI Action 3 did overheat several times because I had it on the wrong setting and it was just fixed there. Um, so, I had it on quite a high uh, frame rate. Um, so, yeah, it was a lot for it to deal with. Um, so, that's a bit frustrating. I wanted to get the whole of the, the two hours um, in uh, Ken Garrett's studio captured, but that's not quite happened. Um, a big thank you to Ken Garrett um, and Will, his assistant. Um, this was our second time with Ken. Uh, the first show didn't broadcast, um, hence why he, uh, he has his assistant with him now on hand. Um, but as per the last time, it was so easy, so natural, the conversation flows really, really well. Obviously myself and Gareth, when he's had coffee, can talk for England. Um, <laughs> see, he's had his coffee <laughs> and cake. Um, and so much so, um, I think we are being headhunted possibly for our own show. Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, what our schedule says, obviously being self-employed, working six days a week. Um, we might have to discuss it. If we do do it, I'd kind of like to tie it in to the Hive as well. Um, so something like the Hive community or something like that. And maybe trying to incorporate some um, customers, um, some suppliers and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we've got to have a think about it. We need to speak to Rodney um, and see what uh, what the future may hold. Um, obviously, if we do do that, though, um, I think I would then probably link up with you guys on YouTube and try and figure out how I do the YouTube side and potentially the radio side as well. So there's a lot going on for 2023. So let's see what happens. <laughs>